Alleluia Ministries International is a Bible-believing and Christ-centered church. We believe Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. His power is still at work in the church today, just as it was in the time of the Bible. We are AMI. My God. Come on, put your hands together. Let's give the Lord some praise. Lord. Oh, come on, clap your hands, open up your mouth, and let's bless the Lord in here. Listen, the Bible says, clap your hands, all you people. Shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Listen, this word clap is the Hebrew word talkalong, and it means to drive a nail through. Which means every time you clap your hands, you drive a nail through the plans of the enemy that he has set up over your life. Now come on, clap your hands for your children. Clap your hands for your money. Clap your hands for your healing and drive a nail through the plans of the enemy. Then he says, shout unto God with the voice of triumph. Ruah in the Hebrew. It means to have a trumpet down in your throat. Now, once every 50 years, they would blow the trumpet in Zion that symbolized the year of release, also known as the year of Jubilee. Two things would happen. One, all of the property you lost had to be returned. Next, all of the debt you had incurred had to be released. And all of your children that were bound had to be returned back to you. Now listen, I'm 44. I'm not trying to wait until I'm 94 to get my breakthrough. God gave me a trumpet in my throat. And I'm getting ready to holler back to God and release my season. Somebody clap your hands, open up your mouth, and shout hallelujah. Come on, shout hallelujah. While you're standing, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for your presence. Thank you for the anointing that's already in this place. I pray today, God, that not one person that came in this building would leave the same way they came. I decree and declare healing in the name of Jesus. Isaiah 54 and 17, no weapon formed against them shall prosper. Every tongue that rises in judgment against them, they shall condemn it. For this is the heritage of the servants of the Lord. Whatever has come against them this week, I command it to be turned right now in the name of Jesus. I release breakthrough in this house and it is done in Jesus' name. Come on, give him one more praise right where you are. Why don't you find somebody beside you, just touch them one time and tell them, say, breakthrough, 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 breakthrough. Hallelujah. Listen, while you're standing, I want to say this. To what I believe to be, and I may not be in a position to declare this, but I'm going to stand in that position. I believe that God has placed the next general in the body of Christ for the world. And his name is Apostle Alf Lukau. I thought, I thought that I had experienced the prophetic from some of my brothers in Ghana. I thought they were the top of the line in the prophetic. But I have never in my life experienced the prophetic the way I've seen it demonstrated through your man of God. Can we give it up for the one and the only pastor, Apostle Alf Lukau? Come on, let's give it up for our leader. And I want to say this. I'm, I'm going to preach, but I, can I just take a few moments because I am overwhelmed with emotion to be in South Africa. And I want to tell you why. First off, when I came here on the flight over for the past week, I've been having a strange pain in my back. 
unexplainable. I went to the doctor. He don't know what's wrong. We don't know what's wrong. It's unexplainable. I'm a runner. I run five miles a day, but I didn't injure myself running. We don't know what happened. And so all on the flight to Africa, my back was hurting. Through the service on Friday night, my back was hurting. When Pastor Apostle Alf Lucal took the microphone and began to speak over the crowd, the back pain was released immediately. Immediately. I haven't had any back pain since that moment. Slap your neighbor a high five and tell him, say, the power of God is here. The power of God is here. I have immense respect for this man of God. I literally fell in love with his spirit. Listen, most people who are prophetic are a little strange. But Apostle Alf Lucal understands the scripture that says, condescend to men of low estate. In other words, he knows how to be humble. He loves people. I seen him love, he knows most of everybody's name in this whole building. He's that kind of leader. Can we give it up for him one more time? Pastor Alf Lucal. And to his wonderful wife, Bishop Celeste, I have not met her yet, but I see her spirit. Can we give God praise for the woman of God? Glory to Jesus. And I want to send some love back home to America. Uh, I'm sure my wife is probably asleep, but I still want to send some love. I was on safari. I'll talk about that in a little bit, but Pastor Lucal sent me on safari. But when you go on safari, with Pastor Alf Lacal, you don't go by yourself. You go with an army. Oh yeah. Literally dressed in fatigues and camouflage. I mean, anything I needed or wanted, it was taken care of. Somebody say amen. amen. But I told one of the gentlemen, he said, I can't distinguish between accents. If you're from America, you just sound American. But in America, we have different accents for different areas. I'm from the South, so I have a Southern accent. And I told him that sometimes this can be perceived as not being an intelligent person. And so we have to speak with lofty language in order to let people know that we are educated. Oh, yeah. And so when I talk about my wife, I don't just say she's beautiful. I say she is the pinnacle of physical pulchritude. So I want to send some love to my wife in America. Thank God for her. I want to say this quickly. The staff here at AMI has been absolutely amazing. Absolutely amazing. And, and I, I want to say this. I have traveled all over the world. My first time in Africa, but I've traveled all over the world preaching. I've been preaching for 25 years. I have never in my life been taken care of the way I've been taken care of in South Africa. It is a tribute to your leader. It is a tribute to your staff. It is a tribute to your workers. Thank God for AMI. Come on, somebody, let's give it up. And very quickly, I'm going to preach. Y'all, I, I don't normally do this, but I'm so overwhelmed with joy because of the love that I felt from AMI. I told Pastor Alf Lucal, I said, you know what? I think I want to join your church. <laughs> but I want to say to uh, Dr. Sharandi, I want to appreciate him so much for making this connection and bringing me to South Africa. He is a true man of God, and he is a person that loves to connect people in ministry. And I also want to say to Minister Busi, she is one of the most incredible assistants somebody could ever have. And if I had enough money, I would try to steal you from pastor. Yeah, Amen. Now do this for me. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I see you in the future. And you look better than you do right now. So I'm getting ready to give God a praise for you. Now, just before I preach, I want you to do something for me. It's going to sound strange, but I want you to take out your cell phone. Okay. 
Take out your cell phone. We're getting ready to shake up the world on social media. You ready? This is what I want you to do. I want you to take a selfie. Now listen, listen, listen. Don't, don't try to get all the angles right and don't try to do all the extra stuff. Just take the picture. All right, take a selfie. When you got it, say amen. Now this is what I want you to do. I want you to take that picture. I want you to post it on Facebook and Instagram. Oh yeah, it's gonna go around the world, watch this. And I want you to tag AMI Ministries. I want you to tag Pastor Alf Lucal. And I want you to tag at Shane Perry Sr., that's me. And this is what I want you to say. This is what my last level looks like. Because from this day forward, I'm getting ready to go higher. Somebody shout hallelujah. You may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. I am grateful to be here. Can I preach to you just for a little bit? If you will, go with me in your Bibles to Psalms 65 and 11. I want to read from the New Living Translation so we can get clarity of the text. Psalm 65 and 11 says, You crown the year with a bountiful harvest. Even the hard pathways overflow with abundance. I want to leave the thought with you this morning. Get ready for overflow. Oh, somebody ought to receive that. Touch somebody and tell them, say, get ready for overflow. I have made up in my mind that I will no longer lie on New Year's Eve. That's right. I'm turning a new leaf, and I'm not going to tell the same story that I've told every year. Every New Year's Eve we say, this is my year. You said it in 2015, but it didn't work. You said it in 16 and 17 and 18, but it didn't work. And I don't care what you've been through this year, God is getting ready to open up some doors to you that are gonna cause your enemies to have to take notice of the blessing over your life. Touch somebody and tell them, say, get ready for overflow. I was amazed when I saw that your theme for the year was overflow. Because God had spoke to me at the beginning of the year, and he said, this is your year for overflow. Watch this. So I know I'm prophetically connected to the house, but watch this. The problem was, it seemed like in 2019, my life was going in the opposite direction of what I was declaring. Have you ever declared you're healed and you got sicker? Have you ever declared that money's coming to you and it seemed like money was running away? Let me tell you why. The devil attacks what God is about to release. Which means your moment of attack is simultaneously your greatest place of release. Whatever area you're being attacked in right now, you ought to be giving God a praise because it means God is getting ready to release in that area of your life. Money is about to be released. Healing is about to be released. Change is about to be released. I wish somebody would turn around one time and just shout, turn around is being released. Somebody shout, turn it around. God, on my job, in my family, in my house, Lord, turn, turn it around, God. When I first came into the Pentecostal church, you may have your seats. Thank you for standing. When I first came into the Pentecostal church, I was from the Baptist church. So in 1994, I was brought into the Church of God in Christ. And when I was first brought in, I noticed that everyone was preaching a message, I'm going through. Every time somebody preached, they said, I'm going through, I'm going through, I'm going through. And I was young, I was 19 years old, and I was a little naive. I said to myself, I'm going to let them go through, I'm going to go around. 
I thought that I could go around pain, but I discovered something. Pain is too wide to go around. Pain, you can't go under it because its roots are too deep. You can't go over it because it reaches too high. And the truth is, the only way to deal with pain is you got to walk right through it. You may have to walk through it with tears running down your face, hands shaking as you're walking. But I've discovered every time I walk through the pain, I always look back and said, God, I thank you for what you brought me through because it made me who I am. I'm a champion because of what I went through. Let me put it to you like this. At the moment of conception, five, I'm going to say this church, churchy, okay? This is going to be kingdom talk. 500 million potential people are released. Did y'all catch that? At the moment of conception, 500 million potential people are released. Out of those 500 million, only one makes it in. Which means every person in here was a champion before you were ever born. You had to fight against 500 million people trying to get here, but you fought your way in. Somebody lift up your hands and shout, I'm a champion, I'm a champion. Forget about your neighbor, high five yourself and say it with a two, say, I'm a champion. decree and declare that before this year is out God is going to cause overflow to break out in your life that's it, that's it listen in fact for the rest of the year the next time anybody says the word overflow I want you to shout like you've lost your mind can we practice one time overflow come on shout unto God overflow You may have your seats. Psalms 23 says, my cup runneth over. Modern translations translate it as my cup overflows. Now what you have to understand, when David wrote this particular psalm, he was speaking to the hospitality of the Israelites. It was believed that, or it was taught that if a stranger came into your town, then you were obligated to entertain them for one night. The way that you let them know, now you could entertain them for longer if you so desire, but the way that you would let them know how long they could stay is by how much liquid you poured in their cup. So if after the first night at dinner, I poured your cup half full, then you knew the next day you gotta go. We say it like this in America, you ain't got to go home, but you got to leave here. If they poured the glass to the top, then it meant you could stay another night. So what David was saying is, when I'm in God's presence, he pours my cup to overflow because he wants me to stay in his power all the time. I wish I could preach in here. God said, I want to cause my blessing to overflow your cup, run down off the table, down through the pews into every part of your life. Somebody shout, overflow. Be sure to tune in next time for the continuation of this preaching. First of all, you have to know who you are. Then God will place the crown on your head and let everybody else know who you are. Once a month, a woman releases a pheromone, a hormone into the atmosphere that is designed to attract a man. Which means you may be around a woman that you don't necessarily find attractive, but if you catch her at the right time, all of a sudden what you think is unattractive looks good. Some of us have been in some ugly situations. Some of us have had to deal with some crazy problems. Some of us have had to go through some stuff that is unattractive. But the Bible says that our praise 
is a sacrifice or a sweet smelling savor in the nostrils of God. Which means when I can stand in an ugly situation and give God the praise, I send up a spiritual pheromone in the atmosphere that causes God to be attracted to my ugly situation. I was working with this pastor in Orlando, Florida, and he told me, he said, since I started working with you, he said, I've had so many haters. He said, and one in particular has been coming against me with all kinds of attacks. I said, really? I said, what is his name? He told me his name. I said, I don't know him. He said, what do you mean you don't know him? I said, you're missing the principle. The principle is I don't know him, which means his platform isn't high enough to hate on me. You got to stop letting people that don't qualify. Oh, okay. So I have devised an enemy or a hater application. Which means that if you want to be my hater, you must first qualify. Because what God is getting ready to do in my life is so major. You better be rich. You better have some good credit. You better own some properties. You better run some business. Don't come at me broke talking about you're my hater. You're disqualified. If you were blessed by this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel. You can catch Pastor Alf Lukau on AMI TV on the public bouquet or on our live stream on AMITV.com. You can follow Pastor Alf Lukau on all social media platforms at Alf Lukau.